Hello and welcome back to the Jolly Pranchers YouTube channel. There's a lot of construction going on today, so the intro is going to be short. But if you're new to the channel, I am a solo developer making a murder mystery RPG called Kid Detective. And this week we're going to cover Fungus. This is part of the complete tutorial for beginners for the visual scripting plugin Fungus that goes with Unity. And we're going to be covering all of the Fungus variables, what they are, and a few examples of how you can use them. Next week we'll get into more complex variable comparisons and conditional clauses, if statements, etc. So let's get into the video. Okay, this week we are starting the new year off easy just by talking about fungus variables. So first things first, as you saw me do, I went to tools, fungus, create, and I created a flowchart because that's what you need to use fungus. If you cannot get fungus right now, you can refer to my fungus video on how to get it from GitHub because it's not currently on the asset store. The reason you want to use variables in any game is to store conditions. They are a very flexible thing. It can be anything, as the name suggests, that varies in a video game. From perhaps you would want an integer variable, which counts the money that your character has in your RPG, perchance. Perhaps you'd like a, a Boolean variable that stores a true or false statement that says, have you gotten the, the water badge? From the water gym leader, Misty, we have, because we're a Pokemon master. Or, you know, you could have a float variable, which stores a, a floating point number. Integers are any uh, value represented without a decimal point, including negative numbers, like negative one, for instance. Float variables can hold more nuanced numbers, like 0.45. This variable could be your character's velocity. Ooh, you could have something moving at, at 0.45 meters per second or something. And then there's string variables, which hold characters, words, perhaps your player's name. You can see me use a string variable in the character creation episode of my Complete Fungus tutorial, and my name is James, <laughs> and welcome to my video. So these are the four basic types of variables uh, that Fungus can use. In the next video, I'll I will be going more into depth on how to use said variables, but you know, you the basic way is you use an if statement. You say if water badge is false, then you know your your character Misty says then it's time for a Pokemon battle. Then it's time to show you the power of the sea. I could write for Pokemon, that's all I'm saying. And then you'd you'd have an else statement where she says, you beat me fair and square. And that doesn't have any typos, uh, so that is uh, good. Uh, definitely doesn't. And then you'd put a little end statement. So uh, that, I mean, that's the if statement, the the while statement, and then in, in later versions of Fungus, which I'm not currently using, uh, in this project, you've got for loops and collections that you can loop through, perform actions on all of your inventory items or something like that. The way you might do something like that is there is a whole other category of fungus variables and I I think people rarely use these but for instance going down the list 
you can store something that you are animating and reference it very easily in an animation command. Uh, this is a custom command, so ignore that. But play anim state, for instance, you can reference, you can uh, go over here to this dot, which due to my janky setup, I can barely see the dot, but there it is. And you can either click in and drag a game object that you put an animator component on. See, you, you can create, let's just call our empty game object animation because it is an animation we want to make. And we will go ahead and add an animator component to this. What we could do here is we could drag in that game object. Or if we wanted to make sure that we never lost this animation, that we kept it orderly. There are different ways to basically organize your game. And if you find this method of organization, you can drag in your animation game object into a variable in Fungus. And this will allow you to, if you want different animations to play at different times, say, you want to use this block every time you fight a gym leader. You want them to say the same kind of thing. You could change the animation for whichever gym you're in by using the set variable command. And you can choose your animation animator variable, which is just named var right now, which hopefully isn't too confusing. And then you can choose what animation you want to change for whatever gym leader you're fighting in this procedural Pokemon game, which you could make with Fungus, and you could use this animator variable in Fungus and play the animation of the gym leader that you're talking to. So I think that's really cool. So that's the animator variable. Audio source, you could change up here. We'll just create another empty game object and add the audio source game object or a component to the game object. And you could add, you know, your audio clip of a gym leader saying, Star me, I choose you. <laughs> you could play that here with play audio source, control audio. There we go, control audio command. And it asks for an audio source. Once again, you could drag in your audio source game object you could drag your audio source game object right into here and ask it to play the command. You can reference my audio video on the audio commands of Fungus to know more about this. Or you can drag your audio source into the audio source variable, which I'll name audio, just so this doesn't get too confusing. And you can reference that variable here. And so when you do a set variable command somewhere else, Obviously, this example doesn't make much sense, but if you want to change your audio source variable to something else at any time, repeat the same block and have different things happen, have different people animate, play different sound effects if different things happen, then you can change your audio source variable. It's pretty cool, very flexible. You can drag in a different audio source into here in your set variable command. Same with the animator. The color variable. This is interesting. So in something like Stardew Valley, you can use a color picker and choose your own hair color, clothing color, something like that. So you could save the player's choice of color in a color variable and set the color of your character's hair that way. The absolute easiest way I can think to do this is you know, you would have some sort of white sprite that you were choosing the color of, and you could fade a certain sprite to your color variable. So here in target color, anywhere there's a target color variable in any of these fungus commands, presumably you can use your color variable value. <laughs> there it is. And you would add the hair color value. Obviously, on this channel, we want sort of uh, we want sort of pink hair, 
a little bit pastel -y. Uh, so that is a cool thing you could do with the color variable. You'd obviously need to add a sprite, drag a sprite into here to, uh, change the color of your character's hair. Game object, this one is really all purpose because everything in Unity is a game object. You could slide the fungus save menu in here if you suddenly wanted to use a different save menu or something like that. that that's a pretty crazy example, but you could drag any game object in here, change it out, play the same block, and a different thing will happen to a different game object. So that's so general. All of these things are game objects. The the animator, the audio source, those are components on game objects, so you can access them directly. But a game object, let's see, <laughs> you can instantiate a game object, creating it on the spot. So any of these tween commands, for example, if you wanted to move certain game objects across the screen themselves, you could always put in your game object variable. If you were making a card game or something like that, and you wanted to move the cards back into the deck at the end of a round of blackjack or something, you could use the game object variable, put in your card variable, and tween it to a certain part on the screen. Move it, or rotate it, or scale it. Whatever the numerous tween commands can do, you can do with whatever game object you want. The game object applies to a lot of these. You can use a lot of commands with the game object variable. I simply cannot cover them all. Material, this is sort of a, a more advanced subject, but as you can see, text mesh pros have different materials, so you could change your text mesh pro material from a white font to a greenish font in the middle of the game if you use the set variable on your material to change the different material. Materials are also used more frequently in 3D games, which can be done using fungus with vector 3 variables. You know, you can tween something to a certain 3D coordinate or a a 2D coordinate just on the X and Y axis with these vector 2 and vector 3 variables. Same thing, a transform component on a game object is where it is in physical space. I'll just quickly, if you are new to Unity and you, for some reason you started on this video about fungus variables, I guess it is pretty basic. You could have a game object that's so small, so small, it's this small. And as you can see, it has a, a transform component, as do all game objects. And when you move it around, the transform component changes. It changes its coordinates in space, as you can see live up there in the corner. And as you can see, it's not changing its Z component, which means I would need a vector 2 to control where my 2D object is going, because I only need two of the coordinates to deal with. But if I was making a 3D game and I clicked the 3D button over here, you can see that uh, I can start moving it along the Z coordinate as well. So that is what the transform is. It also controls rotation, which uh, is zesty. As you can see, I just rotate it a little bit. Ooh, ooh. Wowza. Wow, what fun you can have with shapes and unity. So that's what those two variables do. Texture is another thing more commonly used in 3D. Well, I won't deign to speak on 3D as I have yet to uh, embark on a 3D game. So sprite <laughs> is more understandable to me. You see, this is a sprite in my sprite renderer, and so I could change the sprite in this sprite renderer if I had a sprite variable of Sherlock Annoyed or Watson Apologetic. Rigid Body 2D is a physics object, so if you wanted to add force to a physics object in your game, you could go to the Rigid Body 2D command. You could take a little ball or whatever, 
and chuck it across the screen and watch it bounce and fall in gravity just by adding a force to your rigid body 2D component, which right now is called VAR3. And it's it's fairly easy to create a rigid body component. You just type in rigid body, rigid body 2D, because we're in 2D. You can play with these components, the gravity scale, the linear drag, and the mass. And then we could just drag it into here and throw it around with a fungus command. And you could set a different rigid body there with a set variable command at your leisure. And last but not least is object. So it seems like object can refer to scriptable objects as well, uh, which if you watch the Monkey Island series is what we used for our items. But it looks like this object var variable can hold anything. Like these are scripts, like C sharp scripts. So that is, that's a pretty powerful general variable that you can use with anything. That can't be right, <laughs> but that is cool. So uh, in short, fungus can do anything. These are all the variables you control. It really is a lot of them. And I don't know much about 3D, but maybe I'll do a 3D fungus tutorial game in the future so that I can learn 3D as well. And we can talk all about that. And that was the video. Next week, we're going to get into some of the basic fungus flow commands. And then I hope to get to some of the new ones later, like the for loops and the collections, which it can hold like an array of variables and for loops is something that's used in coding in general. And it's amazing because they added it into visual scripting. So you can learn how to code by using Fungus, a visual scripting tool in Unity, and you can go on to apply it to your C-sharp scripts for your custom Fungus scripts and stuff in the future. Ooh, you can do it. And until next time, stay jolly.